All right, so continuing with with the duotone cut edge color, I like how it worked through these kind of prisms, especially because the line work is really straight. If I use my lasso to cut away from my duotone shadows in kind of these organic shapes, it gives you a nice variation, right? But sometimes that doesn't make sense. So you also have to think of the lighting. What's nice about cut edge duotone is it's very dramatic. It's very graphic. It works really well for, for limited color solutions. And if you work on it in this way, it's really easy to build it up. I'm not having to paint anything. I'm just taking away from certain areas where I want more emphasis. And I'm just using the lasso and the delete tool. And this is pretty limited duotone, where I'm just using one shadow tone and then revealing the, the lighter flat color underneath. But duotone can actually get quite complicated. There's no reason for it not to. As long as you're just doing variations of the local flat color, you are doing duotone, whether you have six variations or two variations. And remember that black and white are not colors, so those are not variations. So black and white can always be added to make something look shiny or stronger. But here I'm just playing with the tones that I already painted in, in my flat color stage. And I'm really just trying to get the color to give it some life. I'm not trying to be really, really strict or dogmatic about it. And for an illustrator, the light logic you need to know, if you're not going for, for purely photorealistic representationalism, the light logic is basically what looks good. <laughs> so just do what looks good and you're fine. Like I think it would look good to have a highlight on the tongue of the snake. It could look good to have some highlights on the teeth. Especially in the shadow of the mouth, even though they're subtle. And by separating this out, I think it would look good to have a highlight on the top of the leg there, right? But maybe more organic. There we go. Now all of this works or doesn't work based on the strength of your line work. Just like your logo, your color can't save bad line work. And color could ruin, you know, good line work. You're just trying to uh, support it, add to it. And that's why we start with flat color because um, overdoing it isn't usually the best option. All right, then let's see here on the vertebrae. I think some highlights are definitely needed. I was going to do kind of some rounded shapes. Wherever I think there needs to be more brightness. 
the I. On the skull. On the back. I want that, but I have to be careful not to also cut into the tail. So you can go back in your history. And remember, with your lasso, you can also augment your lasso. So I make a selection, and then I can add to it or with the shift tool or subtract from it with the option, holding down option. I'm going to subtract from it here, add to it here. And delete it out. I don't have to worry about staying in the lines or not. Remember, I'm just taking chunks and erasing out from my duotone shadow layer, which is a duplicate. So I can always change it. But once we have some defined kind of lights and shadows that we're using, no matter how crazy, Some of these I have to be a little bit more specific on. Once we have them, we can play with adjustments and play with hue saturation to make them more or less specific. And again, just using the lasso and delete for the cut edge duotone. I'm trying to have fun with it. It's really nice to have inspiration so you can kind of know what the overall effect is you're going for. So for my cut edge inspiration, I'm using the Plants vs. Zombies designs. Now, unlike an illustrator, it doesn't smooth it out for you. So these shapes can get kind of wonky. And if you want, you can just use your, your paintbrush as well. And you might decide you need entirely different shapes or different colors rather. And you can certainly do that on your duotone layer as well. In fact, you can just use your paintbrush and I'm gonna use a hard edge paintbrush, pressure sensitive for size. So it's this one right here. Come on. And deselect, and on my duotone layer, I can just paint. I can just stay within the lines if I need to. All right, let's see. Yeah, so that's some basic good treatment. This little uh, shoulder blade, exposed shoulder blade. I want a little bit of highlight on that. On the little rattle, I want to highlight on half of that. Almost done. Let me break up the tail a little bit more.
and it is lower stakes. This kind of coloring than your line work was, meaning you don't need to be as afraid to make mistakes. It's okay. So that's one step of duotone coloring. If I wanted to do more, and I often do, I'm going to take another copy of my flat color layer, a duplicate underneath, and then I'm going to lock my flat color layer because I want all those local colors. But now on this, I'm going to call this one duotone cut edge highlights. And I don't have to do anything on this except play with my levels and adjustments to brighten it and increase the contrast. So using levels and using hue saturation, shifting it a little bit, I think that way. And just seeing. Now I tend to always overdo it. So that's why I do it on duplicate layers like this. But I might like how that looks some places. Right? And not like it in other places. So let's put it on a gray background. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this duotone cut edge highlights and I'm going to play with its opacity overall. And the thing is, I like it mostly in the head. So let's take it at a slightly lower opacity, maybe there, about 67. Then I'm just going to use my lasso and just do a big kind of sweep. And decide which areas I want it and which I don't. So these big chunks now I can kind of push back. But as I delete them I see, I, well maybe I do kind of want it. But if I want to do a third level I might Delete that. So wherever it seems like it's too strong, now I have two steps, you see, between lights and darks. And I can cut those in or out. This is all duotone shading. And it's all cut edge, because look how clean, clean it is. Oops, don't want that. Instead, I want something like this. I can go back to my duotone layer as well, mess with that. And you get kind of seduced into it, and it's hard to keep it simple. Even though it's usually what's best. So I'm going to delete that from my shadows, and then I'm going to delete it from there so I get these nice two tiers. Same thing with the back leg here. I'm going to delete it from my shadows and then delete it from my Microsoft. 